Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby Star Allies. In the last episode we completed the post game of the story mode which is one stage in an ability farm and we did the two little mini games that took uh, three minutes each. In this episode we're going to be tackling guest star Star Allies Go and you might be wondering hey it has the star stamp on it why did you already do it? Well that is because I wanted to play as a dream friend for this run through and to unlock the dream friends you actually need to complete it as any other person so I did it as Vividria. Basically, you get to play as any of the enemies in a shortened version of the main game. Uh, it usually takes, what is this, an hour and 11 minutes. That was a, a pretty quick run because I wasn't trying to do anything fast. I was just trying to beat it fast. Don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, I thought really long and hard about who I wanted to take with me. King Dedede and Meta Knight were already out because they got their own modes in a previous game. Waddle Dee is interesting because he is the only classic character that hasn't gotten his side mode, so I kind of wanted to play as him. However, the three new dream friends that came in wave one, and of course the ones that are going to come in wave two and three, I'm sure somewhere down the line, have their actual own separate quest. It's the same quest for all these characters except for Rick, Kine, and Koo, Marks, and Gooey. They each have an area tailored to their gameplay style. While I do want to show that off, I'm going to be playing as Bandana Waddle Dee. And of course he gets a little Return to Dreamland ding jingle, dingle I almost said. Let's do it. Waddle Dee does not get his time in the spotlight, and you know what? He deserves it. I'll figure out some way to show off the other one. So this is kind of a speedrun thing. Probably should have made a friend with him. Uh, there's a couple of elements in this mode that aren't in the main mode. And I'll talk about them as we go on, but one of them is the fact that you may see our HP down there is actually half of what it normally is. Not only is this like a speedrun mode, but it's also more difficult than the main story, as you can see by our half HP. However, uh, I'm not sure if I should explain it before we actually, okay, you know what, never mind, here it is. We have power-ups in this, and these power-ups last for the rest of the world, of which there's six in this mode. I guess I can't really call them modes more, or worlds more as they are sections. These power-ups last the entire section. You can get them for your defense, which increases your HP. You can get them for attack, which of course increases your attack for power, or you can get them for speed, which increases your speed. This is something that I so desperately wish was in the main game. It would have added a lot more depth to the, well, the secrets first off in the game, because, you know, having a reason to actually look for the secrets outside of like, oh, it'll give me another stage, or it'll give me, you know, this useless power-up and the rainbow puzzle pieces or the normal puzzle pieces. It would have been cool if for that and whole world, you had the stats of whatever power-ups you have found in the levels, and it was just basically an extra, you know, an extra collectible. That would have been so cool, but nope, it's just in this mode, which I guess it's fine. Here, go ahead and give me Fire Spear. Like I said before, Waddle Dee is basically like any other physical power-up. He can have any of the elements imbued unto it. So we will be able to get Fire Spear here, which is probably what I'm going to stick with most of the time since Fire Spear increases the attack power and that's kind of the most important increase in this mode for time's sake. I am going for the most part to go for a lot of the side rooms and stuff since they do, they can give you a, uh, they can, they can give you several puzzle pieces which will make the puzzle piece grinding in this game a lot less worse for me. Of course, like as you can see there, we didn't have to get that item, but the fact that we did means that's one less puzzle piece I have to grind for. So I will be going for those. And of course you do want to be grabbing some of the power-ups. The speed ones are probably the most important because they will get you through the stages the fastest. But you know, if you die, that's kind of a it's kind of a hindrance, isn't it? Also I want to show something off. Waddle D can literally like rain like power on any defenseless enemies. That's like 10 spears right there. Also, sorry if you can hear the really loud cars. There's a first health increase, so there you go. It's all of them at least to level one. They can only go to level five, which, eh, I get it. Uh, can I actually go back and get that frosty boy? Yes, I would love you. Uh, poppy bro. That'll work. All right. Come down, take care of it. Of course, I am going to be in somewhat 
of a rush because that's kind of how this game mode goes. So we're not going to be taking it easy. We're going to be actually getting a high score. Once again, this is a point where I really wish there were leaderboards for this game. Like if they added leaderboards in for the speed runs of every individual character, that would have been so cool. I guess it's kind of variant based on the fact that you do have to rely on on friends sometimes, like there, Burning Leo couldn't grab onto the thing, so it like delayed us a few seconds, but it would have been so cool if they had speedrun times like as a leaderboard, and they don't for literally no good reason. It frustrates me. Also, sometimes when you find the switches in the levels, it'll give you the option to get another dream friend. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my boy. Rick. I know it's the one who uh, at this point I've shown off the most, but I really like Rick. You know, being being a remnant of one of my favorite Kirby games. Well, three being that, but you know, two is probably what they were trying to go for the reference there. So whatever, won't, won't fight it, but still. Uh, I believe you can actually find uh, three Dream Rods. I'm not sure where they all are, if, or or if we'll find them all, but, you know. We can just get more Dream Friends through, well, you fight all the bosses in this mode, except for Grandmam for some reason. Uh, so we will be able to recruit Meta Knight and King Dedede through that method. So no worries about that. Yeah, like I said before, this is mostly going to be just going back through the state. Ooh, can I hit that? Ooh, I can. Waddle Dee with the spear, killing it. As much as you'd like to think it, this is not actually a custom... Oop, I fell right back into the can. I was like, why are you not moving? Um, this isn't actually a custom room to Spear Waddle Dee. It's actually just, you know, like that. There is things that Spear Waddle Dee can do that most other abilities can do, such as poke through the wall like that. Of course, Yo-Yo and Whip and stuff can also do that, but you know how it is. It's nice that we have the option to use Waddle Dee for things like that. But, like, uh, in some of the other ones, there'll be, like, say you do Gooey's Adventure, there'll be a room where you have to use both the burning ability that he has and then the rock ability that, that he has in quick succession, you know, because he's the only character that has both of those abilities at the same time uh, to get through spikes. Like, there's things like that. And for Marx's, there's ones where you have to use the the little ball bombs, I guess you could call them. I'm not really sure what to call them. You use the little ball bombs to hit switches that are through a bunch of spikes and stuff like that. You imbue, like, zap onto your balls, so whenever they explode, they zap above them, and that'll hit a switch. Stuff like that. And then Rick and Koo isn't really too specific to them. It's really just a lot of the puzzles just use their specific abilities a lot, like... You cut something, cool, you know, because Ku always has the ability to cut. Oh, there's fire. You always have fire with you. Of course, you could also like do those just by having a burning Leo with you, but that's not how it is. I don't know. Once again, gonna get as many puzzle pieces as we can. These puzzle pieces are doled out at the end of each section. Like also, we're not even done with section one here if you're wondering exactly how long it is. Um. The puzzle pieces are doled out at the end of each section, and I kind of wish they were just doled out whenever you either quit the mode or finish the entire run. Because I would love to see like a hundred puzzle pieces grabbed at once, because that's how much you can get out of this mode. It's insane. Once again, just doing the solo. Solo cannonball thing. And everything you're seeing is absolutely in the main story here. I do like that they mixed up the Dream Friends. I like, I just have to wonder like, what exactly, what what are they gonna add with the new Dream Friends? There were things that they added with the Dream Friends that we got in the first wave that were of course unexpected. The fact that they have their own unique runs in uh, Guest Star, the fact that they added them to the statues, they added little references to their games in the main story as well. Like sometimes there's like, little signs showing a GUI or Rick somewhere, things like that. So I have to wonder if they're going to add even more content through wave two and three, maybe like leaderboards or something. That would be awesome. Just the fact that they have the ability to update the game. Also, I love Waddle Dee's eyes there. Uh, the fact that they have the ability to update the game 
leaves me with hope that they'll add in something worthwhile for the game to keep people coming back. Although, I guess you could say they did that for Mario Odyssey and, like, literally no one plays Mario Odyssey anymore. It's a few months after the game came out. That's also something about the game industry recently. Everyone makes a game as if that game has to be the only game you play for the next, like, year. If, if people stop playing your game after a, mo a month after it came out, it's considered a failure nowadays. And that wasn't the case for most games, you know, like back in the day, like, uh, let me think of an example. Like, I guess most games back then were made to be replayability, huh? Were they? Weren't they? Like, okay, <clears throat> consider when, like, Final Fantasy VII came out. You beat the game, you're done. You've experienced it, you're never gonna play it again. again. Compare that to a game like Final Fantasy XV nowadays, which gets constant updates to update it, so even when you do beat it, you come back to it every now and again. Ooh, also two upgrades here. You come back to it every now and again to play it. Games like Overwatch, where, you know, obviously it's two years into it, we're actually going to have the anniversary event pretty soon. It's probably already going on when I upload this video. Two years into it, and it's, you know, it's a game designed to be played for more than, you know, a month after it comes out. Things like that. Like, I don't know. It just feels weird to me as someone who, as a kid, you know, I'd just play Luigi's Mansion for, like, months straight. I don't know. Like, I'd play a game, get bored of it, move on to something else, and then come back to that game, like, a few months down the line, just on my own volition, not because of updates or anything. I'm not saying that it's, like, a bad place we're in right now. It's definitely neat that every game is made with the replayability and the attention from developers that it really deserves, to be honest. And it's not just like, okay, we released it, have fun, we're done with it now. I guess that's kind of what I've been trying to get across through that, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna actually take control of Burning Leo for a little bit here so I can get the burn on Wispy Woods. I don't know if you can actually throw a friend heart at him, but we'll try, by golly. But. So you do have to be hitting him at like a certain time to get that extra damage on him. Actually, it's not really on it yet, so we won't worry about it yet. Okay, now I want to get on him. Although I think he's about to blow us off. Please put me on the same side. He did. Okay, whatever. We'll just keep attacking. He's almost dead anyway. So can I throw a friend heart at this boy? I can't. Oh, wow, every checkpoint actually plays the, uh, plays the Waddle Dee theme. Interesting, I didn't know that, actually. I don't think I've played as any of the old Dream Friends since the update, so... Yeah, like, that's another thing that they added in the update. Before Waddle Dee, uh, Bandana Waddle Dee, King DDD and Meta Knight didn't have themes in the game. They were just there. They didn't have, like, a theme, it was just the same song as any other character. They added that in in the update, and they absolutely didn't have to, they had no reason to, but, you know, they did. Like, I'm excited to see any tiny more, any more tiny updates to the game. They also slightly changed the final boss area for this mode, and, you know, that's just a little detail that barely anyone caught. Ooh, I don't know, actually, if they changed the final boss- okay, so in this game, in this game, the final boss has a theme according to what dream friend you're playing. I wonder if that actually applies to the old dream friends, or if it just plays, you know, the normal boss music it is. I'm not gonna spoil who it is, because, of course, this being an extra Kirby mode, it has a secret boss at the end. And that's what we all look forward to, isn't it? So, you know. Also, we're just through one mode. I think I'm just gonna try and record this straight, and then split it up in post. So if you ever see the video end abruptly, it's probably why. So I do want, like, I'm thinking either two or three episodes, not too long. So we've gotten our attack level to max here. Um, that basically means we're going to destroy a boss in five seconds flat. Also, that was a checkpoint. That, was at, that wasn't actually the first area, by the way, just in case you were wondering. One thing that I do like about the, uh, the separate characters other than Kirby is that they all fly faster than Kirby, oddly enough. I don't know if that's because they were designed to always keep up with Kirby no matter what, but eh, it's nice. Also, there's something I haven't been doing a lot. It's called the Waddle D helicopter. I'm not sure how to do it. Hold on, let me look at this. 
Not just a pretty face, he's got a stellar attendance in the Kirby series and deserves a prize. That bandana, that spear, with this, with his courage, he sets himself apart from his carefree parasol holders. Um, press and hold Y. Okay, that's what it is. Alright, it's just weird because usually a move like that is, uh... Yeah, there's the, the Waddle D copter. Look, there's your up B. Constantly spewing out fireballs. Um, it's just weird because a move like that is usually down up B, but it's not. All right, let's keep moving on. Oh, we need friend throw. My bad. I mean, here's the thing. We don't need any abilities for this run through. We could go all the way through it with just wall D, no power ups, nothing. And we wouldn't be missing anything important. Also, what does this charging on this move do? Oh, that makes us throw three spears. Cool. Didn't know that. Always good to learn new things. Need two people to go through here. Loving the DDD remix. What was I saying? I don't know what I was saying earlier. I feel like I got into a tangent for like five minutes there and never came back to my original point, but whatever. Boom, got him. And then I get hit by my own brother, my own brother. Let's keep on moving. Also, if you couldn't imagine, if you couldn't guess, Ku has like the fastest fly speed out of anyone in the game. I think Goo, actually, Gooey uh, and Marks might also have, like, fast, just as fast flying. I just feel like Koo should have the fastest, just because that's how it was in the original game. Kirby's Dream Land 2 and 3. You know how it be. Also, Fire is a weak point of these Waddle D, Waddle D paper mache things. This upgrades all your abilities. Um, obviously, we already have max attack. For some reason, they allow you to get more than five of each, which I guess just adds a bit more leniency, so whatever. I don't really mind it. Not even going to bother with that. This will be the mode where we fight all the bosses with friends, and yes, I'm also going to do that for the arena. I'm not tackling the arena one player, because I don't have the time to dedicate to that. For lucky, you might be able to like completely knock King Dedede out in this upper area here. So that's my goal here. What? What just... Oh, he activated his the thing. Ugh. It's just, if you're really fast, you can beat King Dedede without him activating this cutscene at all. So I was kind of hoping to be able to do that, but not the case. Got him. Yeah, normally he would go down another layer, but of course we defeated him before he got to that. And you're our friend. Oh my goodness, that disappeared so quick. It didn't give me the time to do it. That was extremely rude. Anyway, look at that. 20 puzzle pieces for 12 minutes. That's not bad. That's a puzzle piece a minute, which is still fairly slow. Yeah, that's, that's Dreamland 2 and 3. It's gotta be. It might be representing both of the games and not just one. Yeah, five, oh, five levels, not six. I'm silly. Which I guess is the same as the original game, isn't it? Next level, 